Hello and welcome to this abridged guide to helminthic therapy dosing. Helminths aren't like a drug or single-celled bacterial probiotics that are quickly metabolized and expelled. They are complex organisms that develop their influence over an extended period of time by modulating the immune system. If your body is not used to having helminths, it'll need some time to adjust. A lot of people are tempted to rush to work up to a higher number, believing that more helminths will have more of an effect. But a lot of times it really comes down to how much time you've given them to work more than how many you have. A dysfunctional immune system can't be fixed overnight, but through the presence of therapeutic helminths can learn to function more intelligently. It rarely comes down to having a higher number of helminths. Some people see results as early as five to seven weeks, most around the 12 week mark, but others have had to wait up to nearly two years. Different symptoms usually begin responding at different times rather than all suddenly going into remission overnight. And you might see improvement in some areas, but not in others. Early on, patients used to start with a dose of 25 in A and try to continue topping up as quickly as they could. Now we know that the length of time hosting therapeutic helminths is much more important than the size of the dose. Just 5 in A can be very effective, and starting so small also means less side effects. There's even a theory in the helminthic therapy community that doses of more than 5 are pointless because your body only needs so many and kills off the surplus. When treating children or if you're hypersensitive and suffer from an illness like fibromyalgia, MECFS, have multiple chemical sensitivities or food intolerances, narcolepsy, eosinophilic or mast cell disorders, you can start with as little as three. With HDC, dosing also begins with five, usually once every two to four weeks, but can go up to one to 200 every single week. TSO comes in doses of 500, 1000, or 2500, which are taken every two weeks, but they come in resealable bottles. So if you want to start even smaller, you can get a bottle of 500 and just drink half or a third of it. So you see each species has its own dosing scale, but the common theme is that it's generally best to start small and see how you do. If you handle the smaller doses all right, then the next time you can move up a step. If you don't do well on your current dose size, you can get the same dose again next time. People tend to react milder with each successive dose, so if 15 HDC is kind of rough but bearable the first time around, it should be better the second time. But if 15 HDC are really rough the first time, you should go back down to 10 for another round or two before trying to go up to 15 again. Or just stick with 10, maybe that's best for you. For the best chance of seeing positive results, you should maintain your NA or TTO colony through regular top-up doses. Most people choose to do this once every three months, but if you're hypersensitive, you may want to go a bit slower. And if you're still experiencing helminth-related side effects or a helminth-induced flare of your usual symptoms, you should definitely hold off until that settles down. It can be tempting to dose higher and more frequently to see faster results, but then you also run the risk of reacting too strongly and having to terminate your colony and start over from scratch. With NA and TTO, they might not be able to attach properly and you could end up losing them all. Once your symptoms are in remission, pay attention to how long it takes for them to reappear. That way you know how often to order supplementary doses. At that point, you can also play around with dose size a bit, gradually increasing or decreasing to see what works best for you. With illnesses like inflammatory bowel disorder, for example, you'll need to dose more often and probably higher because these illnesses create such hostile living conditions that kill your colony off faster. This information can be found on the wiki pages, hookworm dosing and response, self-treating with HDC, self-treating with TSO, self-treating with TTO, and hookworm side effects. And I will see you guys in the next installment.